floor to His Excellency Sean Edwards, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training of St. Lucia, speaking on behalf of the Caribbean community. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, the member states of the Caribbean Community CARICOM have long experienced disproportionate challenges for sustainable development owing to our geography, small size, and open economies that leave us exposed and highly vulnerable to external shocks. We also face elevated risk for disaster incidents and consequences, particularly in the realms of climate change, sea level rise, and natural disasters, including hurricanes, earthquakes, and volcanoes. As entirely or predominantly coastal nations, the concentration of population, agricultural land, civil infrastructure, and economic development in the coastal zone exacerbates our inherent vulnerability to natural disasters. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDIMA, utilizes the Regional Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy as the Caribbean's vehicle for the implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. Its overarching framework forms the basis for coordination and collaboration to advance disaster risk management and resilience across our region. Mr. President, we are at the midpoint of the implementation of the 2015 agreements and progress has stalled and in some cases reversed. Let us be clear, this has resulted not only from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also from a weakened multilateral system and the lack of progress in addressing climate change. Our economies have been hard hit, and we are at the tipping point of unsustainable debt. A marked increase in equalities and barriers between risk science, perception and risk-informed decision-making further compound our vulnerability. Against this backdrop, CARICOM member states arrive at this high-level meeting of the General Assembly on the midterm review of the implementation of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction with one clear message. There is considerable work yet to be done. Urgent cost correction is an imperative. Mr. President, Risks are being created and accumulating faster than our ability to anticipate, manage, and reduce them. They bring increasingly dire consequences for people, livelihoods, society, and the ecosystems on which we depend. The shared structural disadvantages and characteristics of our member states place us not only at an economic disadvantage by preventing economies of scale, it also hinders sustainable development by limiting our ability to recover after a disaster than large and small diversified economies. It is therefore the considered view of CARICOM that in order to generate targeted actions that accelerate progress towards the Sendai targets in our member states, the following critical priorities must be advanced. One building resilience to the complex multiple hazards and strengthening critical infrastructure. This includes improving building codes, retrofitting existing structures, and creating more robust communication and emergency systems. Two, the transfer of technology, including enhanced early warning systems that can quickly and effectively alert people to potential hazards with accurate and timely information. This includes building up emergency broadcasting and alert systems and ensuring that people know what to do in the event of a natural disaster. In that vein, CARICOM welcomes the United Nations Secretary General's early warning system for all initiatives and is pleased that the first regional launch of this initiative globally took place in the Caribbean in February 2023. Three, improve disaster preparedness and response plans, which includes training and capacity building in emergency responses, building up emergency supplies and infrastructure, and putting in place systems to coordinate disaster response efforts. 
with interventions to upskill national and regional human capacity. Four, climate change adaptation is critical as CARICOM countries must adapt to cope with the impacts of climate change. This includes implementing measures to promoting renewable energy sources and planning for rising sea levels. Five, building community resilience by empowering people and local actors to prepare for and respond to natural disasters, promoting community-led disaster risk reduction initiatives and ensuring that vulnerable populations are supported. Six, scaling up of disaster risk financing across the region is essential and is inextricably linked to the broader conversation on needed reform of international development financing and the reform of the international financial system. These reforms must take into account in the context of disaster risk reduction, how vulnerability is assessed when assessing development financing. The ongoing discussions on the creation of a multidimensional vulnerability index and the Bridgetown Initiative can lend support to the skilling up of disaster risk financing. If we are to realize meaningful progress, these six priority actions should be solidified in the relevant instruments that would enable implementation, including the new Sustainable Development Blueprint for SEEDS, which will be adopted at the fourth SEEDS conference hosted by Antigua and Barbuda in 2024. Mr. President, we've adopted a declaration that reaffirms our collective commitment to the full implementation of the Sendai framework, including its guiding principles. Let us ensure these do not remain mere words on paper, but are translated to real-world tangible actions towards our shared goals. CARICOM remains a committed partner, prepared to work with all to ensure the full and meaningful implementation of the Sendai framework. Thank you.